Have you ever been told that your pregnancy was high risk? That can be a term that gets thrown around a lot during pregnancy and sometimes can be very confusing as to what it means and what it's referring to in the pregnancy. Given all the confusion surrounding it and the fact that it's such a scary term, today we're going to talk about that. What is it that makes a pregnancy high risk? Welcome to the Dr. Lexi Show, where I take pregnancy topics and break them down as best I can to help you advocate for yourself and a healthy pregnancy. I'm Dr. Lexi, a board-certified OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist, which just means a high-risk pregnancy doctor. And today we're talking about what makes a pregnancy high-risk. Before we get started, I want you to be aware of a free download that you can get at drlexihill.com backslash advocate. It is going to be a handout of the 13 questions that you can ask your OB provider. It's a fantastic handout. It's got little places for check marks for you to check it off when you're done with it and places for notes as well. And then also you have the ability to go to the website and look at high risk modules so that you can see if there's a module that's just right for you and a possible high risk issue that you're having with your pregnancy. You can find those modules at drlexihill.com backslash pregnancy dash module. Being told you have a high risk pregnancy can be confusing and very nerve wracking. So let's talk about it. So it's a term that we throw around some in the field that I am in. And sometimes you can actually see a maternal fetal medicine specialist and their office might be called a high risk office. And so it can be something that's very, very confusing if you're referred to someone like myself who is a high risk obstetrician. So the first thing, as you might know, that I like to do is I like to try to expand our knowledge surrounding a topic. So that's how I try to break these things down. So let's look first at what can make a pregnancy considered high risk. So what I like to tell people overall, too, is that every pregnancy has a risk because it's pregnancy, right? No pregnancy is without risk at all. So some people like to say, okay, I've been told I'm either low risk or high risk. So if that's how it's been relayed to you, that's what I want to try to break down today is that terminology of being high risk. So the way I like to say it is that there could be something going on with the pregnant individual or with the passenger. And I'm going to break that down even further. So for the pregnant individual, there's usually one of two things going on. Number one, the pregnant individual had a medical issue before becoming pregnant and now they're pregnant. Examples of that would be high blood pressure, diabetes, hypothyroidism, sickle cell disease. Those are just some examples. Crohn's disease maybe. So that's one type of thing that you can have going into the pregnancy with known medical complications. Or the individual themselves can develop a medical complication during the pregnancy. These can be examples like low platelets, this could be high blood pressure. It could be gestational diabetes. It could be something called cholestasis of pregnancy. So something that's developed in the pregnancy. So now we have the pregnant individual that either has a pre-existing medical complication or they develop a medical complication during the pregnancy. The way I also break this down is if you were someone who was seeing a specialist prior to the pregnancy, like you saw a gastroenterologist for Crohn's disease or maybe ulcerative colitis, you saw a pulmonologist, a lung doctor for asthma, or you saw a cardiologist for something going on with your heart, or an endocrinologist for diabetes or thyroid issues, you are entering the pregnancy as a high-risk pregnancy, okay? All right, so now that we've broken down the pregnancy, right? So I say the person that's pregnant, the individual that's pregnant. That's one thing we talked about. Now we're getting over to the passenger. And as I mentioned passenger here, I want you to think about three possible things. The fetus, the amniotic fluid, the placenta. So these are the things that I kind of group together as the passenger. There could be things going on with the fetus. You could have fetal growth restriction, meaning the measurements are too small. You could have fetal macrosomia, meaning the measurements are too big. You could have structural abnormalities where there's a part of the body that didn't form well, like a club foot, or there's a hole in the heart, things like that. 
So those are things that could go on with the fetus. Then we get over to the amniotic fluid. The fluid could be too low, which we call oligohydramnios, or too high, which we call polyhydramnios. Those are things that your OB provider might manage themselves. They might send you to a specialist as well. Then we get over to the placenta. A placenta could implant in a bad location, like too low, and then cover the cervix, which we call a placenta previa. The placenta also could have poor general implantation, where it doesn't just sit where it needs to sit right next to the uterus, but it could grow into and kind of embed into the uterus so that they're not just next to each other, they are connected. Those things we call placenta accreta spectrum now. So there's a level of how that invasion could go. But that's another option of something or an example of something that could make a pregnancy high risk. So now that we've expanded our knowledge and talked about the individual themselves, what in the pregnant individual could go on, could be entering pregnancy or developed in pregnancy, as well as things that can go on with the passenger, which is inclusive of the fetus, the amniotic fluid, and the placenta. Let's now develop some skills to say, all right, we have been told that our pregnancy is high risk. What do we do now? So number one is ask, 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 just ask some questions. And one question is, what is it about my pregnancy that makes it high risk? Can you explain that to me? Can you help me understand what about my pregnancy is considered high risk? Then moving into what are we going to do about it? What's my follow-up plan and who do I see? So getting a plan of management surrounding whatever item it is that makes you considered to be high risk. Then the next thing I like to talk to people about is trying to discuss further with your provider where and when you will deliver. Some items that make people considered to be high risk need to be delivered at certain times. Some of them need to be delivered in specific locations. So depending on what the issue is, the location and the timing of delivery might change. So make sure you ask your provider that as well. The other thing I want to kind of focus on and just mention again, don't forget to ask what is the plan for follow-up? How often do I need to be seen? Who am I seeing? How frequently are these visits occurring? So that you kind of know your general plan of management. So now that we've developed a few skills about what types of questions to ask, I always go into what is the impact we want to have? An impact is having some type of an effect on someone or something. The point of all this and the impact we're having is trying to get and have a healthy pregnancy in the end. So if you hear that there's something with your pregnancy that is considered to be high risk, all these questions that we talked about, what is it that makes me high risk? What will we be doing about it? Who will I be seeing? How frequently will I be seeing them? When and where will I be delivering? Developing those skills is how you're going to ultimately have this impact on trying to have the happiest and healthy pregnancy you can, even if it is considered high risk. So let's recap a little bit and go through all those things, okay? So number one, looking at if a pregnancy is high risk and finding out if it's something going on with the individual that's pregnant or with part of the passenger, which we kind of talked about being the fetus, the amniotic fluid, or the placenta. Second thing, developing those skills so that we can ask the right questions on who we will be seeing, where we will be going for appointments, and where we will be delivering are all important questions to ask. And then don't forget about the impact. All of this information you're learning, you're developing these skills along the way too so that you can advocate for your pregnancy every step of the way, regardless of whether it is low risk or high risk. Looking at the impact that I'm trying to have on individuals, I always go back to growing up in a small town. And part of this is to have an impact on individuals who might not have the resources available in the cities they live in because they're not in a city. They're not close to a city. They're in a smaller rural town. And so I hope that this information can get to individuals of all walks of life in many, many different places and sizes of cities, towns, all that kind of stuff so that individuals can get more information at their fingertips and learn more about their pregnancy and the questions to ask so that you're involved in your pregnancy every step of the way so that you can advocate. And advocating is the way to help you navigate any issues you have in this pregnancy.
Now that we've gone through expanding our knowledge, developing skills, and talking about the impact that we would like to have, I want you all to know that you can leave any comments below and also let me know of any topics you'd like me to discuss in the future so that I can continue to help break down pregnancy topics in simple terms as best I can. I'm Dr. Lexi. Thank you so much for joining. Here's to advocating for a happy and healthy pregnancy.